Ooh. Oh, they sparkle. In this video, I'm gonna turn this boring black ceiling into this. Today, we are going to be building the fiber optic starlight panels. This has been a long time coming and an upgrade that I've been wanting to do for a while now, and I'm really excited to show you guys the process that I'm gonna go through. Peter over at Starscape gave me tons of insights on how to do this the right way. So if you guys are looking for fiber optic star ceiling, you need to check out Starscape's website. First important step is to enlist some help from, no, not from my dogs. Here's all the parts that I needed to get this fiber optic panel technical side of it installed. These came directly from Starscape. And so we've got the light emitter, we've got the fiber optic strands, we've got the adhesive that I'm gonna be using, the silicone. We've got several drill bits, varying sizes that match the fiber optic strands, the two light emitters, and they're all nicely wrapped in sleeves to keep those fiber optic strands protected. You can kind of see there the strand ends coming out. There's actually a hundred in each one of those tubes. So there's 800 fiber optic strands in total and all of those will be connected into the light emitter box. This is where all of the magic happens, including the twinkles and the multicolors and everything else that you're gonna see here in this video. So I went into SketchUp and just drew out the panels because these were gonna be custom made and I was gonna be using MDF boards and some one by twos just to build this out. I then proceeded to start cutting down the MDF board down to the proper side. My brother-in-law, Rick, was in town, so I enlisted his help, which did make a big difference in getting this project done. So we just kind of took turns there, getting our MDF boards cut down to the proper size. These were two by four, but they're actually a little bit longer than four feet, so I had to cut them all down. Then onto the one by twos, getting them all cut down to the proper size. Fortunately, the plans that I drew up uh, were pretty symmetrical, so we were able to cut up a lot of these strips all at once. I will include those build plans down below for all of you guys if you're curious to see what those look like or build your own. Then we proceeded to mark off on the MDF board where the screws and the boards were going to go because I wanted the screws to be on the back side of these. And so I was going to glue the one by twos to the MDF board and then flip them over and then screw them in from the opposite side because I didn't want any screws poking down through into the fabric. This was gonna require some clamps, so went over to my clamp wall and grabbed my clamps. Yep, gonna need a few of those and cleaned off the boards and started to glue these pieces of one by two down to the board. There might be a better way to do this. This is just kind of the design that I came up with and in the end, it turned out really well. The most important thing to me was to keep these things as lightweight as possible. They were gonna be staying up on the ceiling with the use of some very strong earth magnets so that I could remove them if I ever needed to service them or bring them down for any reason. And I didn't want any screws or anchor methods showing from the bottom side. I wanted them to be very clean. So that is why I decided to first glue these boards down and then we clamped them onto this scrap piece of wood to flip it over and then proceeded to screw on what would end up being the finishing side minus the fabric that's gonna go over this and cover it all. So I just need to make sure that these screws were flush. So we did countersink every single one so that they were flush and we proceeded to make every single panel necessary. Next I needed to generate a star pattern and I wanted it to be very realistic. So I went to Starscape's star generator. I'll put a link to this down in the description. This is really, really cool because these fiber optic strands of 100 fibers each, I had a total of 800, so eight of these strands come in four different size fiber optic strands which create the realistic star pattern of varying sizes. And based on that, I knew that I was gonna have 640 of the points 0.5 millimeter, 112 of the 0.75, 40 of the one millimeter, and a total of eight of the big fat 1.5 millimeter fibers. And then I wanted to color code these so that I could easily see which ones were which. And then I had a total of roughly two eight foot sections of panels. So this star generator will generate a square pattern. So I simply generated this entire pattern and then cut it in half. And then I had two eight by four sections that I could then use on the projector. I used this inexpensive projector that I got on Amazon, set it up connected to my laptop, and then proceeded to put the panels up in the order that they would end up being installed in so that the pattern stayed consistent based on the generator. I then projected that JPEG image that I generated previously directly onto the panel 
and Rick and I then started marking every single one of the star spots so that we would know where to drill the holes. I decided to drill the holes and mark the panels before putting on the final material because I did not want to get that material dirty, even though when we go to drill it, the material will be on there. This process was time consuming, but I really think it's going to pay off in the end by doing a very accurate star field. After that, I wiped all the panels down and proceeded to paint a solid primer coat on them because MDF board is really, really absorbent. And because I was going to be using a spray adhesive for that fabric that will cover these, I wanted to make sure that they were well treated so that the glue wouldn't just get absorbed into the MDF board. I painted another coat of black on top of the white base primer because I didn't want to risk any of that white showing through when drilling the fabric. Speaking of fabric, this fabric was actually provided by Starscape because it does not spin or strip or get snagged when drilling through it. We then did the spray adhesive. This was easiest to have two people because we could spray both sides and then flip that material over directly onto the board. You didn't need to spray both the fabric and the board. I don't know, there was something mesmerizing about this spray adhesive watching it go right down on the board, but I messed up here, so I just had to, you know, remove everything off of this one panel. Just kidding. If you do have to do this by yourself, you can fold the material over, not on the adhesive side, lay down half of it, and then try to flip it. No, it didn't do very well, but you do have a few seconds here to work with it. Be sure to always work in a well-ventilated area and wear a mask with this spray adhesive. Now it was time to drill those holes. We proceeded to drill the holes with the bits that were also provided by Starscape in the various sizes of fiber, and there were 800 of them, so this was going to take a while, so we just got to work. This 90-degree drill worked very good from DeWalt. One thing to take into consideration when putting your fiber down and stringing it into the board after you drill the holes is how far that fiber is going to reach and where you're going to attach it to the board. Then use a razor blade and carefully cut the outside sleeve off. This released all of the fibers on the inside so that we could continue to string them through the board in the holes that we had just drilled. I then laid it out and secured the base with some Gorilla Tape directly onto the board, approximately where I wanted it to be. It was determined based on making sure that it could reach to the light generator. We just got to work and started doing every single one. Some were easier to thread than others, and we just kept at it one by one, threading it from the top side and then reaching down underneath it to pull the fiber all the way through until it was fairly tight on the top side because we didn't want these fibers snagging or hanging up on anything when they were being installed. We later did secure some of these down with some additional Gorilla Tape after we used some silicone on every single fiber. We worked from one side all the way around to the other to try to keep some organization to these fibers as we were pulling them through, and it just looked much prettier that way, even though nobody will ever see it from this side. We then connected the light generator to it just to make sure that everything worked, and wow. I don't know about you, but there was just something mesmerizing about all these fiber strands just dangling and hanging there. I kind of think that that would make a pretty cool decoration in a room, never cutting them or trimming them, just kind of leaving them hanging or dangling. Maybe that's for another project. What do you think? Do you like this really cool fiber look? Okay, here's that silicone process that I was telling you about, and we just went along and put a little dab of silicone on every single entry point so that they would not pull out when we clip the other side. It was important to get a decent amount of silicone on every single fiber strand as some of these did pull out when we were doing the install if there wasn't enough. I then used these clippers just to go along and clip off the ends of every single fiber that had been passed through. just like that I was done I finished the panels I got them done they look amazing no we are far from done we had a lot more fibers to keep stringing through panel after panel after panel it was great just my brother and I hanging out threading some fiber to finish off the edges we used a staple gun to secure that fabric which did have a little bit of stretch in it 
to the sides and then I just worked the corners, trimming them out to clean them up. This is all gonna be on the back side. We secured these washers to the panels that would later connect to the magnets in the ceiling. It was now time to install these into the theater, which happens to be in my shed. And if you have not seen that video, I will link it up above here so you can go check that out or click the link in the description when you're done watching this video. To secure these to the ceilings, we used some one by twos to create a frame in the ceiling and I found it easiest to pre-drill the screws and we were countersinking them as well. So we did all this on the floor before going up into the ceiling and just took care not to drill into the carpet, of course, but just got all the screws ready because when you're working overhead, your arms can get tired pretty quickly. I'd already measured this all out, so I knew where these were going, and I knew I just wanted to create a frame that I could easily connect. My plan from the time that I actually constructed this home theater was to put the light emitter in the attic space, which there's not a lot of room up there, but I did pre-install an outlet up there with the forethought of wanting to do this at some point. So I just had to cut some holes and drill some holes into the ceiling to be able to run the wires and the fiber optic strand in there. I then started putting the Govi LED light strips around the perimeter. If you guys have never tried out Govi LED light strips, they're not sponsoring this video, but they have sent me products uh, over the years, and I always love the products that they send me, so highly recommend them. I've got them in lots of spaces in my home theater. Then we installed the earth magnets, or the very strong magnets, up in the frame itself. Getting kind of thirsty at this point, I took a drink and contemplated at this point... Yes, yes, it will be worth it. We were getting very close now, I could feel it. We had the magnets all up in the frame, ready for these panels to be installed. So we brought the panels into the theater and proceeded to put up the first one. Even though I tried to make these as light as possible, they did still feel a little bit heavy putting them up there, but I managed to do it single-handedly and they were supposed to snap in. Were they gonna snap in? Uh -huh. Pop, 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 right on. Before putting the panels up, I did secure those strands with some more duct tape just to make sure that they didn't pull away when I was stringing this up there. This was a little bit tricky here, trying to get those fiber strands up through that hole while snapping it in at the same time. I erred on the side of using too many magnets instead of not enough just to make sure that those panels didn't go anywhere once they were snapped in. Starscape provided some extension cables which just threaded one into the other and then I was able to reach that light generator and I connected them to the ceiling with more duct tape. Here again, I had to thread those fiber strands into the ceiling while putting it up at the same time man i sure love how those magnets just snap right in and hold this thing up so strong unless you give it too much force and something like this happens holy moly i was adjusting it too much and not paying attention everything was fine though and the projector actually saved the panel in the fiber optic strands because when i plugged it into the light generator everything worked just fine i then stuffed the light generator up into this little cubby and covered that hole with this neat little plate that i found online and now to turn it on for the very first time Whoa. oh there it goes there it goes hold on i gotta turn this light off Ooh. oh they sparkle Oh, that's Sorry. fantastic. That was the look we were going for. At this point, I actually thought I was done for real. Like, I was truly excited. Bye -bye! Nope. There was something that was staring me in the face every time I walked into that theater. What the This heck? was the indoor unit of the mini split for heating and cooling. So I decided to make a brand new custom panel that would fit just that space. So I just used some pocket holes and made this frame that would go around the air unit there because I wanted to make sure that there was enough airflow going around there and I couldn't put the MDF all the way across in front of it because that would completely block the airflow. So I put the 
fabric in front of it, gave it some breathing room inside of there, made sure that the air could still flow, used the same magnets, but this time I put it on a hinge so that I could easily drop it down anytime I needed to access this space. And there you can see all the fiber optic strands run right into the fabric and silicone onto the fabric. I can hinge it down, still access that indoor unit, change the filter uh, when I need to, and then just close it up and hide it all away. And now I genuinely felt like I was done and we were off to the races. Still racing! Hey, we are still racing! Come on guys, let's go! Let's go! Move it! If you're gonna push a piece of machinery to the limit, expect it to hold together, you have to have some sense. Let me know what you guys think of the results of this. And may I remind you that this is all inside of my shed. Yes, I built this entire home theater inside of a shed. The link is in the description of the video here to go check out the entire build video from start to finish of me turning the shed into my own private home theater for my families. If you guys wanna see more content like this, do you guys wanna see me turn other sheds into epic spaces? Let me know your ideas down below. I wanna know what kind of room or space should I convert my next shed into. See you on the next one.